What's going on guys? Thanks for checking out Black Diamond Guns and Gear. I'm Josh. And I'm Josh. Today, we're painting some rifles. What's going on guys? Thanks for checking out Black Diamond Guns and Gear. We've got a little bit of noise in the background, but we're going to try to do this and hopefully it's not too loud. Uh, we were, actually me, was wanting to see what it would be like to paint my rifle. Now, Josh on the other hand, I'm against it. <laughs> so... So basically, we're gonna see if it's okay. Now, I've heard from a lot of different places, you know, black rifles stick out. You need to have some 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 type of camouflage on them, Cerakote, what have you. I'm gonna go the cheap route because I wanna see if it's gonna hold up. First of all, I, I don't think it'll hold up like Cerakote will. No. But I do think that this is a cheaper alternative. I wanna see if the hands and stuff, like I wanna see if it's gonna be sticky and stuff like that. I'm just basically, I'm doing this as an experiment for you guys. Now we're not doing it on a high-end rifle, which is normally what I see done. And yeah. I hate taking paint of a high-end rifle. So we're doing it on a Radical Firearms. Uh, this is just your basic 16 inch mid-length rifle. We've shot it on the, the channel a few times. This is the one we're painting, so. I mean, to, to be honest, this rifle is $499 right now at our local store. Uh, I think this is a good option you have for the rifle itself. I think it's great. Uh, so we just threw a little Holosun optics on here. It's the one that has the, the uh, solar panel or whatever. Solar panel, on. yeah. So it's not like the cheapest option, but it's a good option. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. We've already taped it off on where we wanted to tape it. Honestly, we didn't tape very much of it. We just taped the crucial parts that we didn't want to get paint on. You can tape whatever you want. We taped the optic. We didn't want to get anything on the glass. We taped the muzzle brake because you didn't want to get anything down inside of it. And I wanted to tape the trigger guard there so it wouldn't go up in there. Other than that, it's pretty simple. We're ready for paint. So what we did was we actually took some brake cleaner and I just got this at the regular, I think I got it at Walmart actually. Brake cleaner, we sprayed it down. The reason why you want to spray it down is because it gets all the dirt, grime, oil, greasy shit off of it so that it actually helps it helps the paint ad adhere to yeah. it right it makes it stick to it a little better and actually what i did was we sprayed it down with the brake cleaner and i took this little what are these called like a scotch bright pad yeah scotch bright pad i kind of <clears throat> rubbed it on there to get the surface of the anodized parts a little bit rougher so that it had the paint had something to stick to a little better i've always heard that the more prep you do to this thing the better the outcome is going to be. So I've, I've actually prepped this thing like three times. The only other cool thing I'll say is the paint is actual Krylon camouflage paint. That's what it's marked as. So it gives you the actual colors. I'm going with a multi-cam. Uh, it gives you the actual colors of what you would need. And actually I bought these little, I bought these little stencils offline and it gives you three different patterns of things. So you can use a different color for each pattern. And uh, yeah, so we're just kind of learning as we go here. I've never done this before. I don't know if you've ever painted a rifle before. I have, but it sucked. So we're gonna try to make this not suck. We're gonna try to make this look as good as possible. Hopefully it don't look retarded. Yeah. All right guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with the sand or FDE color, which is, uh, like I said, it's just more of a sand color. This is, like I said, Josh said, was a Krylon camouflage paint. And this is going to be our base. So we're going to mist it on, see what it looks like. I guess the whole thing about this is you don't want to go too heavy. You kind of want to, like he said, just mist it on, get a layer. Let it dry, mist another layer on, let it dry. You don't want to go too heavy on it. And like you said, we're using the lightest color first because that's the color you want most seen is your lighter color. Uh, in camouflage, I think it's easier to hide lighter colors than it is darker colors, correct? Yes. So that's why you want the lighter color seen the best or the most. All right, I'm gonna let her dry for a minute. All right, guys, we just put the second coat on here. It looks like it's sticking pretty good, and it looks not overbearing. Like we said, you don't want to spray it on there super thick at first. You just kind of want to mist it, right? Yeah. We also have something out here. I think it's a good idea if you have something in mind, like we're doing the multi-cam. 
it's a good idea to have something out here with multi-cam on it so you can get an idea of what you're trying to look like. All right, so we were checking it to see if uh, the paint was dry on it. It was dry enough to where we could actually flip it over, do the other side. We put two coats of the uh, lighter FDE color on there, the sand color. So we're gonna spray this side with two coats. And like we said, just missed it. You don't want to cake it on there. So, you know, just barely do it. You wanna have a little bit of finesse with it. You don't want it to look like your girlfriend's makeup. Just caked on there. But we're painting the furniture, we're painting the magazine, we're painting everything. Because if you're camouflaging this rifle, just in case shit hits the fan, you don't want nothing seen. Yeah. You want to be like Josh's jacket. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going with the next darkest color. And this is like a uh, darker kind of brown. And we're just kind of throwing the stencil on there and uh, letting her eat, basically. We're doing it in spots. We're not doing like the whole page. And uh, I mean, it, so far it looks pretty rad. And that's just got two colors on it. Check that out. Nice. I mean, you gotta think, you're gonna have three or four different applications on here of different colors. So, if it looks rad just with two colors so far, I got a feeling that's gonna look pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. Optic a little bit. Look at that. That's cool. Very cool. Ah. Let's let her sit. <laughs> like I said, you don't want to overdo it because if you overdo it, it's going to look caked on. It's going to look not natural. And I think that eventually it would rub off quicker, right? Yeah. Because you're going to have thicker spots on there that would just basically rub off if you rubbed up against something. So the flatter you can make it to the actual rifle, the less it's going to run off. So like I said, this is our first time doing this thing. And I think it looks pretty cool just like this. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine it with, you know, OD green, a little bit of, you know other stuff on there so i think it'll yeah, look pretty cool i think it's gonna look good <clears throat> i told josh he's gonna want to do one of his after this no <laughs> maybe not really yeah i mean you ain't got a throwaway rifle in there that you could do this with i done traded all my throwaway rifles <laughs> for cooler rifles yeah <laughs> all right guys so we basically let it dry a little bit on that side to do these uh, little stencils on here and we think it's dried enough to where we can actually start spraying the other side now. Now I would say, do you want to hold it tighter? Nah. You just want to let it lay? Yeah. I guess if we let it lay, it gives it that misty feeling, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, look at that one. That's awesome. Guys, I know that it's, it's kind of weird with the shadows over here, so I'm trying to get a little closer to it so you can see it. But we're actually letting it over here in the sun, so it will actually kind of dry a little quicker. Sorry to hear that. Basketball game in the background. There you go. That's cool looking. Gets the Williams top of the circle. He fires left side. Who's gonna take another nice. long jumper? No, motherfucker. What? Yeah. Scraped it. That'll be all right. There'll be more on there. There'll be more layers. I think it looks pretty rad, dude. I think it's gonna look awesome when it's completely done. 
I was telling Josh I really like how doing everything with it on there because you got some patterns that will go between like your receiver and your optic and they could kind of blend together versus having something that's Cerakoted and it being one piece and then the other piece being Cerakoted and then not going together. Just like having the mag in there, the mag is going to have some stuff that go together like that versus it being two separate pieces. And I think that's pretty cool. But all you YouTube trolls are going to say, what about the other mags? Yeah. Well, well we're going to run a whole battle with one mag. <laughs> yeah. Gonna manually reload every single round, every single time. Yeah. <laughs> I'll probably end up doing a couple of mags anyway because it's starting to look really good. And that was my point. I was like, if it's going to look good, then I'm going to do a couple more mags so I have them. Are you going to paint them in an Anderson? Maybe. I would. All right, guys, so with these little stencils, like I, I bought these off Amazon. They come with three different sizes. The first one was one that had a bunch of complex patterns. This is the next size that gives you a little bit smaller patterns. And we're going to use the next color with that, which we're going to go with an OD green. That kind of color right there. I don't, know if you see it I don't know if you can see it too good, but this is the, this is the color. It's like an OD green. We're going to go with the next smallest size to that. And we're going to paint that thing so it looks. Now we're not doing this in any certain way. We're just kind of throwing it on there. So if it's over top of other color, that's fine. We're just putting it on there, however it goes. Because the patterns are smaller, it's gonna get a smaller, yeah, it's gonna get a smaller area of it and allow those other colors to pop through. Nope. Probably wouldn't hurt to have gloves when you do this either. Yeah, we'll be fine. <laughs> Dude, I think it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, we're just gonna move it around, use different patterns in different places. Check that out. Green's popping through. I mean, the brown's popping through underneath the green. Dude, that looks good. I'm actually pretty surprised at how good this is turning out. Might get a little misty right here. So we might take like the smaller, which I think that's what we plan on doing anyway, taking the smaller pattern, which we have over here, and putting some extra uh, lighter spots in it like this. So you have the lighter, lighter sand spots. So we're gonna take some sand spots off this smaller pattern and put it over top of areas where we have like a more of a mistier green kind of thing. And you know, we got a, still got a dark brown we gotta use too. So we're gonna probably put that in there in different areas. It's gonna look cool, man. So we're coming back with the darker color. It's like a darker brown. We're just hitting it in spots. So you can tell here, just doing that one there, that one across there, just in spots enough to make it to pop through. Because we don't wanna to use too much of a darker color. We just want enough for it to come through. I really wish they'd quit cutting that tree up. All right, guys, so we kind of made a decision that these four colors are the four colors you need. If you're gonna do a multi-cam or woodland or something like that, uh, because I've tried like a little bit of white and I was gonna do a little bit of green from this here color, but it turns out like that. And I don't think it's gonna look very good. So I think what you should do is literally stick with their camouflage colors. Like this is from Krylon. This one here is from uh, Rust-Oleum. I actually think the Rust-Oleum does better than the Krylon in my opinion because didn't we try to spray the uh, tan cry uh, cryon and it kind of like went a little runny on us yeah so the rust-oleum did really well uh but yeah i think it's it looks really well except for where we kind of messed up here a little bit and we messed up over here that we had to over spray on something guys as you can see from the footage we did paint this thing and i gotta say it turned out way better than i expected actually uh josh did a really good job he acts like he knows what he's doing or something. We tried. 
<laughs> I'll be honest with you, it really wasn't that hard. Uh, I have never painted a rifle before. I've never even thought about painting a rifle before until I started watching a bunch of videos where people were like, why are you not painting your rifles? So my whole point of thinking about painting this was the fact that, you know, I don't, ha all my rifles, pretty much all of them, I mean, besides the one that we buy that are Cerakoted, you know, OD green and stuff like that, pretty much they're all black. And if you're in the woods or you're in a place where you don't necessarily want to, I don't think you'll, it'll make you disappear, but it'll make you blend into your surroundings or make you lose your rifle in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to have a black rifle, especially if you're wearing, you know, camouflage for your surroundings, you know, multi-cam, whatever it may be. You don't want to have a black rifle across your chest and it'd be the only thing standing out that people are going to see. Yeah. I'll agree with that. So to me, that's the whole idea behind this. What I want to do is to spray paint this thing, which we did, and make it look pretty awesome, which we did. I picked multicam because all my stuff is multicam. I think multicam is a very functional camouflage, especially for our area. Uh, you know, you have a lot of greens and browns and tans and stuff like that. More or less more brown and green than tan. But a lighter color is going to be able to blend into something a little bit better than darker colors. So the oh, tan yeah. is where that comes in at. Um, now, you were overseas and stuff like that. Now, you know people that have painted their rifles, and what is the reasoning for that? So the reason that you would want to, uh, especially like your, your your operators and stuff like that, the reason they want to paint their rifles is for more to blend into their environment. Uh, especially you have snipers. You have, uh, you know, people that are, you know, actually doing actual missions to blend in that they don't want to be seen. Um, a black rifle can be seen out of your peripherals and you don't even know that you saw it. And you're just like, okay, what was that? Yeah. Uh, at least with this, it's going to blend in more uh, than your, your average rifle, uh, especially with the colors that we chose. Yeah. They're going to blend into a lot of different environments. Now, the thing that we, like I said, around here, browns, greens, browns, greens, dark FDE, whatever, it's all, all the natu neutral, natural colors are going to blend in really well. Uh, so we picked up this camouflage. It's a, it's a Krylon. Not saying that you have to buy any specific brand because we're not yeah. we're not sponsored by them or anything like that. Like you're trying to say, uh, but this is Krylon. This is what they actually call Krylon camouflage, and it's made. I think it's because it's a matte finish. That's yeah. the reason why they say it's camouflage. Uh, this is a Rustoleum. We use all of these on this rifle. Um, my whole point of this, I want to see if the spray paint is going to hold up. I have Cerakoted rifles. We have Cerakoted pistols. This is a 19X right here that is Cerakoted, not necessarily Cerakoted, but it's an anodized color from, from Glock. Uh, you know, we know this holds up. We want to see if this is going to hold up. I think over a period of time, if you're using it like you're supposed to, like a tool, it'll eventually wear off. It'll eventually, you know, you'll have to respray, you know, spray it, which is fine, but I want to see how long it's going to take. I also want to see basically if it's going to work. You know, I, I, all the people, I think a lot of people are saying, well, why are we going to spray paint that? It's going to mess it up. I don't think that's necessarily the case. Like Josh was saying, people that are actual operators, they do it all the time. Yeah. They probably do it more than not. So that's what we want to do. The really cool things I wanted to show you was I went on Amazon. Josh is not the biggest person to like Amazon. Bought some Magpul sites one time and they sucked. <laughs> so, so I told him, I was like, yeah, but there's some good things on Amazon, man. This is very cool. This I'm not going to lie to you. This is pretty cool. So this is uh, stencils. Now, these things come in uh, three different kinds. And we were talking about it, and it kind of looks more like Tiger Stripe than anything. But it comes with three different sizes of stripes. So this is kind of like your bigger, more coverage area of stencil. This is your medium coverage area, and this is your small coverage area of stencil. We didn't use this one. We just used these two. Which we kind of take <clears> this <throat> together to get some of the smaller patterns for certain things. And, yeah. And it, that way we didn't get a, a whole heap of overspray and yeah. stuff that we didn't need. But but I say this. Grab it. Do what you want. You know, it's art, basically. Do what you want. Make it work for what you've got. You know, I, I wanted to do the mag. We didn't do the whole mag, but we did part of it because it fits great with it. I think it's really cool to have everything 
done while it's on the rifle. Now you can take it apart, spray it how you want, that's your deal. We taped off what we thought we needed to tape off to keep safe, and we just went with it. Turned out really well, and uh, I'm kind of glad we did it. Like I said, I'm going to run it, see how it works, see if it's going to hold up. I know that the spray paint is not going to destroy this rifle. I know it's going to work even with it on this rifle. I, like, I, don't, I don't think it's going to hurt it at all. Man. So the question is, should you spray paint your battle rifles? This is a this is a Radical Firearms, I think we said in the beginning. This is a Radical Firearms uh, AR-15. I don't know what they're, I don't know what they call it. Radical Firearms R15. RF15. Okay, so this is a kind of a budget rifle. Uh, I think it's a very good rifle for the price that you pay for them. Right now at our local store, they're $4.99. That's pretty balling in my opinion for what you get. It's all made in Texas. Really cool rifle. Now, the reason why I did this is because I start off with this rifle. It's a budget rifle for the most part. Um, you know, it's not a POF, which is what I would... Out of my rifle set, I like my POF. That's what I would call my battle rifle. Uh, so, I wanted to do it on this first to see if it was going to run, see if it's going to function, see if it's going to ha uh, hang on and, you know, basically hang in there. And I think it will. If this holds up, I look at stuff as tools. I understand that people buy things because they're, you know, sentimental or because they like to collect things. We all do that. I get people not wanting to spray paint something because it's what do you call an heirloom you know something or that something you, of value something you just don't want to spray paint because you know it's not something that you would spray paint in my opinion but if you look at them as tools you're going to use them as tools i don't see a reason not to do your battle rifle like a pof i may do this to my rifle if it, it works out good. if it works out good that's what i might do so in conclusion are you going to spray paint one of yours maybe now, you could go get it Cerakoted. We know plenty of Cerakoters. Jay from Liberty, Liberty, Jay from Liberty Bell Firearms, great Cerakoter. Uh, Corded Arms. Smitty from Corded Arms, great Cerakoter. Those are two guys that were in our area that we really like. Awesome Cerakoters. Is Cerakot going to hold up more than spray paint? Absolutely. Oh, hell yeah. But is this going to be a cheaper alternative that you're just going to use as a tool? I think so. We're not here to tell you that you're wrong for spray painting your rifle. Yeah. We're here to tell you, do what you like and do what works. Yeah. This seems like it turned out really cool. I'm going to run it. You guys do what you want to. I think it's pretty neat. Don't it spray is. paint no Barrett like T-Rex arm. <laughs> yeah. Is uh, Eugene Stoner going to turn over his grave because we spray painted his rifle? He would if we did that Colt back there. Yeah. Don't do that. Guys, thanks for watching. I think it turned out really well. Let us know in the comment section what you like or what you think is going to look cool or if you think this turned out pretty cool. Hit like and subscribe and all that stuff. Share this video with your friends. Go check out our merch at Ballistic Inc. You can buy hats like this one here. It has a BDGGX logo on it. We'd really appreciate it. Guys, go check out US All Shield. USAllShield.com. Sign up and use promo code BDGG. Not only does it help save the channel, it'll save your ass in a pinch. Yeah. You can also go to North Coast Tactical and get the tuck holster. It's for what big dudes need if they want to carry appendix. Guys, really appreciate you watching. Stay vigilant. Stay safe. Stay alive. Go paint your rifles. Hey, if you want. <laughs>